from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, Episode 7. On today's episode, I am going to teach you how to make a ring that is very popular on Pinterest um, that I've only actually shared with people who signed up for my newsletter before, but today I'm going to show you how to make it. It's a circle ring, and I'm also going to give you some ideas of things you can use to get started making rings if you're not sure if you're ready to shell out a bunch of money for tools right away. So I have some ideas for you for that as well. So let's get started. I wanted to start today with a small discussion about tools and um, maybe some alternative ideas that you can use for tools. I hear from a lot of people that they would like to make jewelry, but they can't afford the tools. So I wanted to tell you, you can actually get started pretty inexpensively. Um, and if you're not sure if you're going to love making rings or not, I can show you some things you can use before you go out and get a ring mandrel um, that you can use to make rings. So let's, let's kind of test it out before you decide if it's something you're going to do for long term. So to start out, I will show you my ring mandrel. And actually, to be official, this is not a ring mandrel. This is actually a ring sizer. It's hard plastic. Um, and has the sizes on it as you can see but ring mandrels are usually metal or wood and um, it's so you could so you can hammer on them without any problems I will tell you though I hammer on this all the time I haven't had a problem this is pretty inexpensive I got this on eBay years and years and years ago probably ten years ago and it's still holding up um, and it was really only a few dollars so this is more of what you actually should probably use um, actually what you should use is a ring mandrel itself but if you find a hard plastic ring sizer it will work just fine as well alright so some ideas you can use if you don't have that and you just want to give this a try um, before you actually invest in um, a tool is a marker. Now this is a regular Sharpie marker. I looked around my house and for some reason I can't find any big markers. This would be way way too small for my finger and probably most people's fingers. Um, but if you have tiny fingers this size would work. But a marker that's bigger would work fine. Um, and maybe one of those big highlighters, which I was sure I had, but I didn't, would work great too. The only thing I see happening, because if you can picture highlighters, they tend to be the same size. Um, you have to like slide the ring off. So I think maybe if you took the cap off, you'd be able to slide the ring off. Um, and of course, you know, it wouldn't be a custom size to perfectly fit your finger. But you know it's something to try see if it fits maybe it will work for you another idea I have are paint brushes um, this paint brush is actually kind of thicker and it would probably be very good for rings um, this one is nice because it's thick and it goes down to thinner so you can just slide the ring right off when you're done making it um, any bigger paint brushes you have to like paint your house would be perfect too. So those are just a few ideas. And another idea I have is getting a dowel rod. You can go to the hardware store. You could even, you know, take a ring off that fits you the way you want to make, you know, the size you want to make it and try out different sizes of dowel rods and then pick the one you'd like and then you will always have the perfect size for you. Um, and they are relatively inexpensive too. So there are ways around tools when you don't know if you want to invest the money in jewelry tools yet or you're not, you know, not sure 
if you're, it's going to be something you're going to want to make long term. So to try it out, there's some ideas for rings. And then I also just quickly wanted to give you some ideas for other tools. So for this project, you're going to need wire cutters, um, and these are, the ones in my hand right now, are specialized um, jewelry wire cutters. But you can easily look in your um, toolbox and find wire cutters that will work fine to get you started. Like I said, to try out jewelry making. Um, you'll also need pliers. Uh, chain nose pliers and actually for this project I even use a pair of pliers that are specifically from a hardware store um, that are serrated so they have teeth and those came from my dad's toolbox and in fact um, and actually, I think I mentioned this in another episode. Um, pliers that you get from hardware stores that are not jewelry specific have wire cutters built in them. And that is a fact I did not know until um, just a few years ago. So you may be able to just pull out a pair of pliers from your tool chest and have the wire cutters in as well. Alright, so for this tutorial, the supplies that you need are wire, and this is 22 gauge half hard wire, and to get started you could use copper wire, or you could um, use silver plated copper wire, whatever, you know, however you want to get started. I don't suggest when you're practicing or just starting a new um, jewelry project that you do it in sterling silver at first because it's really upsetting if you mess up very extensive supplies. So we have wire. You're going to need a ring mandrel of some sort like I explained before or whatever kind of uh, tool you're going to use to wrap the ring around. You're going to need pliers and like I said, these are serrated pliers. If you don't actually have this type of plier, you can get away with not having it. Um, this is just so you can get a better grip on the wire and, and pull it harder. You're also going to need wire cutters, or you could use the wire cutters in your pliers if you're using those. And you might need just a regular pair of jewelry, chain nose pliers, um, these are the kind that are flat, but you could probably get away without them as well. Alright, so let's get started. So to get started on this ring, first we're just going to cut off a piece of the wire at about a foot long. And then we're just going to set that aside. And now we're going to work on the focal point of this ring, which is the circle. So I like to just wrap the wire around my ring mandrel at about size 4. Um, and for this you can use any of your other tools that you want to try to make your ring. Um, just anything cylindrical will work. So I'm just going to wrap around. And I'm just, I'm not cutting the wire off yet. I'm just leaving it on the spool. I'm going to go around, you can go around as many times as you want. I'm going to go around, it looks like about five, maybe one more time. Alright, about five complete times. And then, just cut off the extra wire. And then just pull off the circle. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab that wire that you cut earlier. And you just sort of hold the ends and figure out 
what the metal is. Um, I bent that a little too far. I wouldn't necessarily put a bend in it. Just figure out what the middle is, and then put this around your ring mandrel. Um, if you're using a ring mandrel, it's about, you want to go about a size or half a size bigger than the size you're actually going for. Alright, and now you just, so you have the wire, the loose ends in the front here. And then you just pull the little circle coil thing you just made um, over top. So the loose ends are in the middle, the wire is going around, and your circle is on the top here. And now you're going to take the wire and go around. So, you're coming through and then pulling out on either side. And now you're going to go around with each wire. So the one that was on that side comes around to this side. This one goes around to that side. Now, since you want to keep this circle empty, you're just going to thread this wire through and back out, just like you did the very first time, and then the same on this side. And do not try to keep your wires from getting twisted up in the back. Alright, and then I'm going to just do this one more time. Just because we're using 22 gauge wire um, to make it a little more sturdy. So just do the same thing again. And again. Okay. Now, We're going to take the ring off. Now, when you do this, you have to kind of hold on to everything to make sure um, it doesn't get loose or strange. So, just kind of hold on to everything. And now you're going to take this wire and wrap it around through the inside. And you're just kind of going sideways here. And you're doing the same thing on the other side. It should end up going the opposite direction. And now, slide it back onto the ring mandrel. And at this point is when I like to try to fix anything that got a little twisted up. I just take my thumbnail and straighten it out and then kind of push it down to make sure it's rounded all right now this loose wire here we're going to deal with that in a little bit so don't worry about it um, it's the, wa the loose wire from the circle part. We'll get to that in a minute, so don't worry about that. Alright, so now this is kind of the trick to making rings. Push this down as far as it goes. And you're going to take the serrated chain nose pliers grab it, this wire by the end and pull very hard and then up. Let me give you some safety tips. When you pull on this wire it is possible, no matter what kind of wire you use, that the wire will break. 
So be very, very careful. You might even want to wear goggles um, or some sort of glasses protecting your eyes. The other thing I wanted to say is this. I have a small studio that is just in part of my house and I don't have room for a setup for um, my ring mandrel. But if I did, my ring mandrel would be on a vise being gripped, something like that, so that it would be more stable. So if you can do that, that would be great. Alright, so after you do one side, you take the ring off, flip it over, and do it again. And then you take the ring off, and you go around the same directions you just did three times. And try to keep these all nice and tight and even. And you do both sides. And then you just kind of do what you just did again. So you put this back down on to the mandrel. You pull hard, pull it up, and again, you pull down, up. Now, this extra wire, we're just going to trim off, and you just trim it in the middle, on the top here. You don't want to put it down, to trim it underneath, because it could poke, um, poke you when you're wearing it. And then I just take my regular chain nose pliers and just make sure it's tucked down. Alright, so my circle has turned into an oval and I want to fix that. So all I'm actually going to do is stick my ring mandrel back in here. and form it back into a circle. Of course, you can be more careful. I wasn't being very careful um, when you're actually making it so you don't have to do that. Alright, so now all we have left are these two So that is how you make the circle ring. Well, I hope you enjoyed making your ring and ECT TV episode 7. For more information and a photographic tutorial on this how to make this ring, go to my website. The link will be below. It's at KimberlyKohler.com. And while you're there, you will find an extra little bonus of how to customize your ring. Plus, if you sign up for my newsletter, you will get future episodes in your inbox in PDF form. So it's easier for you to download and print the tutorials and just take them right to your work table. Remember, to get started, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a whole bunch of expensive jewelry making equipment and tools. Just get started with what you have. Just get creative and think about what you could use around your house to start making jewelry today. I will see you next week. Creativity through making jewelry is my e-course 
for helping you find your creativity or rediscover your creativity, learn to make jewelry, and express your creativity through making jewelry. Right now, I am in the process of reworking it, adding to it, and updating this e-course. And the update is almost ready, and it will be ready in March. And I'm so excited to re-release it out into the world. Right now, this e-course is $49. However, with the changes, the price will be going up to $67. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So if this is something you might be interested in, I suggest that you get in, on it, get in on it now and then you'll have access to all the updates when they are ready. You have lifetime access to the e-course, so no matter how many changes I do to it, how many updates, how much I add to it, how much the price goes up, you already have it. You don't ever have to pay for it again. So head on over to the website at www.rediscoveryourcreativity.wordpress.com and learn about it. There is a free little mini week uh, there for you to test out. Give it a try and sign up and look for the updates in March.